I recently had a fire in the backyard with my granddaughter and she soon learned that a fire is will burn and will consume anything that you throw into it. She also discovered it can get pretty hot. <laughs> and at one point she got a little too close and she said, I'm afraid. And that made me think of some stories that I told many months ago in, in regards to Moses as he rescued the people from Egypt and he brought them to the wilderness and they're at Mount Sinai and God wants to meet the people. Now on this particular day, uh, Moses is there with the people and God comes down on Mount Sinai. So they're all there in the presence of the Lord. The trouble was when God came down on Mount Sinai, the mountain was like a fire, um, lightning, thunder, uh, clouds all around, smoke all around. And um, when that happened, the people were afraid. But Moses wasn't. I mean, he'd already uh, been with, with God at the burning bush. He saw God in the burning bush, and um, he saw that the bush wasn't consumed. And so he knew that God was not going to consume anybody that he loved. So he wasn't afraid. And he just moved toward God. When he heard the sounds and he saw what he saw, he saw heaven, he saw, he saw God right there and he wanted to move with joy toward the joyfulness of the Lord. But the people who were there in the presence of God saw something quite different. They saw fear, they saw death. <laughs> they, they saw hell right there in the presence of God. <laughs> you know, it made me wonder I know God inhabits heaven, but does God inhabit hell as well? King David said in Psalm 139, where can I escape from you, God? If I make my bed in hell, there you are. You know, for the longest time, I'd always thought that the good person, the, the Christian who was a good believer would go to heaven, and the bad person, the non-believer was gonna go to hell. And I, and I thought all those bad people, it doesn't matter who they were in the past, we're all going to go to hell and have eternal damnation. You know, people in Noah, I mean, they were terrible and only Noah escaped the flood. They were all, they were all blotted out of the earth in the flood. And then years later, I started thinking to myself, you know, in compassion, why would God blot them out? Why would he send them to an eternal hell of damnation when they never heard the gospel? when they never even heard a Savior was coming. Then one day I came across 1 Peter chapter 3. And in that chapter, it said that Jesus died in the flesh and was made alive again in the Spirit so that he could proclaim to the spirits in prison that formerly had not obeyed God at the time of Noah. <laughs> wow! So those people who had died at the time of Noah, even though they died in the flesh, they were alive in the spirit. And Jesus um, proclaimed to them after he died. So um, we wonder where he went in between the time he, he died and the time he was resurrected. He went to, he went to the prison. He went to hell. He went to proclaim to everybody who he was and what he's done to set them free. And in fact, he even goes on a step further to explain it a little more. Let me read it to you. It's um, in chapter 4 of, of um, it as well. Uh, and it says here, For this is why the gospel was preached, even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. <laughs> huh. Is it possible, is it possible that hell is not the destruction of people be from a vengeful act of God for obedience, but in fact is a choice that people have made in the spirit. They moved to hell because they were afraid to move toward the joy of God. Not, a, not just afraid, but just willfully choosing to move away from the joy of God, like they did at Mount Sinai. I don't know, this isn't some strange doctrine I'm trying to voice to anybody. It's not even a different gospel. It's still the same gospel of Christ. What it really is, 
is the gospel of Christ on steroids. It's, I mean, it, imagine how, what the gospel is. It's more than we ever thought it was. It's not only just proclaiming to us who are living, it's proclaiming to those who are dead, who've died in the past, who've died in the future, that who he is. Come to him and enter into the joy of the Lord. Yeah, the goodness of God is greater than we, we all can even imagine. Friends, I invite you today, that if this is your day to go to Mount Sinai, don't be afraid. Enter into the joy. Just tell him you want to be there with him. You'll do the rest. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Just love him. He'll love you back. See you next week. Bye for now.